Baseball on tap. It's the Chicago Cubs taking on the Miami Marlins. So just about set now and on the hill here today Jesus Lizardo. Anytime you have five pitches to work with on the mound that repertoire can be a real weapon in terms of keeping hitters off balance man it's it's one of those things that I'm going to be looking for in this one. Does he have a feel for all of those pitches or is he just able to get one or two over in the strike zone where he wants. Now it's tough to do to be able to command all those pitches but if he can he is going to be very tough for the opponent today. Seven o'clock. Ball one low. In there for a strike at the top of the zone. Out there on the mound, he's setting the tone early with the fastball, 98 miles per hour up on the scoreboard. Got him. One gone here. Now, I'm not really sure why he let that one go by. I mean, out of the hand, it had a lot of the strike zone. Sure, it had some good arm side run at the end to move to the outside part of the plate. But with two strikes, you got to be ready to swing it there, and you can't leave it in the umpire's hands. And first offering is fouled off. One out, base is empty. That one back up the middle and it gets through. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from. And there's just no one there to knock it down. One down. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Ian Hat. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Lazardo, 26 years old, and he was a third round pick back in 2016. Here comes a pitch. That one ran inside, almost got him. Suzuki, the base runner at first with one out. And that's off the inside edge. And that's ball two. Fouled off. He was late. Step off, throw to first. Suzuki back in standing. Good eye in that spot. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Ground ball right side, and that's just foul. And a pitch. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Blew the express right by his bat for strike three. And up to the plate comes Cody Bellinger. That immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. And a pitch. And there's a foul ball. And the slider just misses. It's a good take. Next offering is down low. He's really tightening up his hitting zone with two strikes here. I love it. Got him looking, and he didn't like the call. Cubs leave one, and now the Marlins will have a crack at things. No score. You're dialed into the show.
back here with my pal Singy and towing the slab Justin Steele Chris what are you looking for from him great sinker although it's not his primary pitch it's really a pitch that he can go to misses the barrel of the bat gets ground balls and lets the defense work behind him and now Luis arrives he's kind of an outlier especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power and that one just misses a ball and no strikes. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. In the air right field, and a quick out number one. And time now for the Marlins lineup. And the key to victory for them here, get their starters some run support early. Boog, if they can get him that run support early, it's likely the other team folds because they know how dominant he can be once he gets settled in. So put pressure on that other team right away. Jump out to a lead early, and a few runs is going to feel like 30. Here's Tim Anderson. Swing and a ball popped up. Two away. That was a good, hard fastball with some nice ride up in the zone right there. Hitter looked like he was on it, but I think that velocity at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop-up and an easy out for the defense. Bell has to step out of the way for ball one. Two outs, space is empty. Next offering is fouled back. And he chases a high fastball there. Do that fastball right by him, slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. Two outs. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Nothing doing for the Marlins. Scoreless after one. Top of the second. Here's the veteran shortstop, Dansby Swanson. Lazardo back to work. Right through there for a strike. That one catches the corner for a strike. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Hit on the ground to the right side. And it stays fair. And that rolls into the corner. Safe at second with a leadoff double. All over that one right there. He was definitely late on that pitch, but he didn't get beat. He got the bat on plane and just kept his hands tight to shoot it down the first baseline for the knock. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. So now the DH spot, Christopher Morell. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Man, it's second. Swing and a miss. And it's one and one. Ooh, bye. You got to remember to take the donut off the bat, partner. Kicks and fires. That one fouled off. That missed inside. And the count's even at two. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Looked like you got a little excited on that fastball. Got to think to yourself, I want to stay up the middle. That way, if you're a little bit early, you hit it out of the ballpark. If you're a little late, opposite field not. And another ball. Boog, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. Outside, and that is ball four. 
Here's Jan Gomes. That misses the zone, and it's one to know. Swanson on second. Morell at first with no outs. Liner stagged it first. Puts the tag on him, and it's a double play. And up next for Chicago, Patrick Wisdom. This guy with light tower power. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Wouldn't chase that time. Well, no need to go right at this guy. First base is open. He can hurt you, so make him expand his zone. If he doesn't, give him a walk. The pitch. Oh, he doesn't get the call. Ball three. Nick Madrigal on deck for the Cubs. The pitch. That catches the top part of the zone. And now three balls and a strike. There's the strike of the knees. And there's a fly ball deep right field. That one hops against the fence. And they strike first as they take a 1-0 lead. And that's a two-out double. He hit that ball really well to deep right field right there. Got a pitch to drive and just stayed through it nicely. Didn't quite have the trajectory to clear the fence, but you're always happy with an extra base hit. Man in scoring position with two away. Nick Madrigal, the next Cub to hit. Pulls that one foul. Runner at second, two down. Turned on, but that's foul down the third baseline. Swing and a ball lined out towards center. Chisholm makes the catch in and over. Cubs pick up a run on the RBI double. It's now a 1-0 ball game. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Stepping in the long ball threat, Jake Berger. The line to kick the pitch. Steal. An all-star a season ago. He features a four-seam fastball, a slider, a sinker, a curve, and he works in a changeup. Swing and a miss. Curveball in the dirt. Man, that was pretty gross right there. That misses the zone. One and two to count. I don't think he was trying to miss by that much in an 0-2 count. Just tried to overthrow that pitch. That misses the zone. And it's two and two. Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. Inside three and two to count. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. And it's into the gap. Makes the turn and heads for second. And he's there with a leadoff double. He was all over that one. Anytime you can drive a ball into the gap the other way, it feels so good. And that's when you know you're right where you need to be at the plate. It's even better when it gets you extra bases. Gotta love looking in at your dugout and seeing your teammates fired up. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. First offering and it just misses.
And he swings through that one. That pitch started in and ended up on the outside edge, just changing planes and very difficult, especially for a left-handed hitter to track. Swings through that. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. Half snags it. Runner tags it second. And he's in safely at third with one out. That is good. The left fielder. Warrior. Brian De La Cruz getting ready to hit. This is the classic manufacturing a run situation. A runner at third, less than two outs, and a golden opportunity to bring him home. In there at the knees. That's strike one. One away with a runner at third. Pitch misses there. And one and one. And now the lefty flips the corner. One and two. Struck him out looking. Well, they were pretty much giving it to him right there. Playing the infield back. All you're looking for on offense is a simple ground ball. And you got a tie ball game. Not sure what he was thinking up there. Strike out looking is the last thing you want to see. Now you got to hope the next guy can pick you up and come through with a big two out hit. And here is Jesus Sanchez. Up and in. 1 and 0. Oh. And another ball. Pretty easy to give up on that pitch right there. Started on the edge of the plate with the spin. You know it's going to finish well off the plate. And he deals. That one misses. And it's 3 0. Abasail Garcia waiting for a turn at the plate. Left hand batter waits. So now two on and two outs. That just came apart right there. Four pitch walk and guy at the play was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. Abasail Garcia up to the play. That one misses. That's five straight. Lefty out of the stretch. Runners at first and third. That one rip, but foul. The pitch. This one trailed. Right center field. That one heading for the fence. And gone! And the Marlins jump out in front. It's 3-1. Nothing better than hitting a home run to put your team out in front. He's enjoying a fun trip around the bases. That's the exact definition of hitting the ball where it's pitched, taking that outside fastball and driving it the opposite way out of the ballpark. You want to bottle that type of approach. So two down, Nick Fortes, the next up for the Marlins. And that gets the top of the zone for a strike. Two down, nobody on. And that one a little below the knees. And that's ball one. Two outs. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. 
the pitch. Fights it off. You'll see another. The pitch. That missed by a lot. And the count is two and two. Two gone, bases empty, but three runs across, bottom half of inning number two. And that one hit to first, finds its way through base hit. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat, worked himself into a good count. Just a simple ground ball the other way, they had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do, just let the ball travel, put the ball in play, and just hope it finds a hole. Luis Arise stands in. First pitch misses. Laboring here. About to throw his 30th pitch of the inning. On the corner for a strike. And a count one and one. Now snap throw to first. And he dives back in safely. Ball to strike. The pitch. Fouled off to the right. Kicks and deals. Misses just off the outside edge. I think that was a strike. Caught a break right there. Pretty good pitch on the outside corner. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. And a pitch. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score. Ground ball up the middle. Swanson sends it to first. Out with room to spare, and that's the inning. But the Marlins get three on the homer, and this is now a 3-1 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here at Lone Depot Park. Here's the second baseman, Nico Horner. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. First pitch, just misses. Well, the offense has gotten going, and a pitcher wants to go out there, have a real quick inning, get those guys back into the dugout so those bats can stay hot. In the air, left side, De La Cruz settles underneath it, makes the grab. One up, one down. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming yeah, open man. instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. And first offering is fouled off. The wind and the pitch. Yeah, that's outside. And another ball. That one the other way. He dives, but can't hang on. That's a base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one out single. A couple of hits in a row for him here. Just a really nice approach to shoot that line drive to the opposite field. There's a lot of hard work and discipline that goes into getting a result like that at the plate. Doesn't come naturally for most hitters. Hap stands in here, leaves that one off the inside. Suzuki, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. And a good eye there. Hey, he doubled up on the off speed there. We talk about the power fastball, but he's working a little differently here. This is off the inside. Three and oh. 
And there's the automatic. Hat tries to hold up, appeal to first, and he went around, says Ricky Holiday. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. He had him out in front, which isn't easy to do against a hitter like this, known for using the entire field. Just couldn't sit back long enough on that one. Bellinger up to hit. Went down on strikes his first time through. Foul ball there. Slapped foul. The Cubbies down by a pair. We're here in the top half of inning number three. That one a little bit high, and it's one and two. His understanding of the strike zone, very impressive. That was a very close 0-2 fastball. I just don't know how you take that. Fights that one away, still one and two. Just missed. Swings and misses. Couldn't catch up to the heater. One left for the Cubs. And it remains a 3-1 ball game. Back here in Miami, here's the shortstop at the play. Tim Anderson. The wind of the pitch. Fastball for a strike. You know, these Marlins do a great job, Boog, of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way, and I'm seeing very patient at-bats out of them. It's not just the three runs they've already scored. On top of that, they forced this starter to throw more pitches than he wanted to at this point of the game. So, a foul ball makes it one and two. And that pitch count is impactful because if they can keep making him work hard out there, it may... Oh, this is deep to left center. Way back there. On its way. Gone. A massive home run. It's 4-1. That was blasted. Absolutely. No doubt off the bat. When you're working with this kind of velocity, so critical that you move the ball around, work quickly, and make sure that you keep that hitter off balance. Clearly not fooled by the location or the velocity. He was all over that fastball. Josh Bell at the plate now. His first at bat was a strikeout. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Now, no waiting around right there. He was ready to swing it on the first pitch. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. So, man aboard, Jake Berger, the next up for the Marlins. Fought off foul. Outside low, and the count even one and one. Though Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. And that is in for a strike. And the count one and two. One run across in the frame so far here in the last half of the third. The punch out there, and there's one down. 
Got away with that curveball, no doubt about it. It passed right through the heart of the strike zone, and he just couldn't get the bat on it. When you strike out on one like that, that's when you start having conversations with yourself, and they're not usually very friendly. Here's the center fielder, Jazz Chisholm Jr. He's 0 for 1. Fastball for a strike. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. And a pitch. Runner on the go. Cut on and miss. Gomes, great throw. Caught stealing. Well, I really didn't expect him to try to steal second base because he had a very standard lead at best. If you're going to try to get there safely, you've got to get more on that lead. You've got to get a better jump. That was the difference between being safe and out. Two down, nobody on. One ball, two strikes. And they'll do it again. Tries to check his swing. Now a look to third. And he won around. Not an easy call there, but that puts an end to the inning. Marlins had another with the solo shot. It's now a 4-1 ball game. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. And we're back. And now the shortstop, Dansby Swanson. Dansby Swanson. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. Not even close there. And that's ball one. You know, these Cubs showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. He's only given up one run, but the starter's pitch count is starting to get up there, and that might be the best news yet for this offense. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage, and that might be the case today. Now fly ball to right center. Chisholm makes the grab on the run. Now that designated hitter, Christopher Morell. Now it'll be the Cubs DH. Christopher Morell. Morell, 24 years old, and he was born in the Dominican Republic. That pitch in for a strike, going one. foul ball one down base is empty lifted in the air right field Sanchez gets under it hauls it in and there's two away now the catcher. two outs base is empty now here is Jan Gomes Popped up, foul territory behind the play. Fortes makes the catch, and that'll do it. Three up, three down for the Cubs, and this is still a 4-1 ball game. Bottom four, we have the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. The left fielder, as the lefty gets to work that one's upstairs ball one ball one well he hasn't quite settled in out there four runs in three innings he's going to have to have some quick one two three innings to pitch deep into this ball game and that is in for a strike and it's one and one And another ball. The wind of the pitch. And a foul ball.
the 2-2. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. Drifts towards it. Reaches over the wall, and he's got it. And now the right fielder, Jesus Sanchez. That one in there across the letters. Base is empty one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Outside. And now it's even one and one. Bounce to the right side. In time to wisdom. Already two gone here in the home fourth. Up next for the Marlins. The designated hitter. Now here's the Marlins DH. I'm Asayil Garcia. He's already homered in this game. That one missed. Pitch is in there. And the count one and one. If he doesn't get a knock right here, that pitch he just took is going to eat at him for a while. You might not see another pitch like that from a top-level guy like this. Two outs. Wouldn't chase that time. That one just misses. Really good two-strike pitch right there. Surprised he was able to spit on that thing. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Oh, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a full scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. Cortez stands in now, looks at that one inside. Some early action out there in the bullpen. Drew Smiley up and throwing for manager Craig Council. Snap throw to first. And he's back in on a dive. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. And a count even at one. Corner over to first. Inning over. So it's no runs on no hits, no errors, and one left on base. On to the top of the fifth we go. It's the Marlins four and the Cubs one. And welcome back to the ballpark. We go to the top of the fifth. So up now for Chicago, Patrick Wisdom. And the pitch. Swings and misses. And that's strike one. You know, these Cubs, digging into their numbers, have to be happy with the swings they're taking. We've already seen eight line drives from them, and it's always a good sign when the ball is jumping off your bat. And that's what this offense has been doing so far today. The next pitch misses. Now two balls and a strike. And a pitch. Just misses the mark outside the zone. Goes down looking. Well, definitely a borderline pitch right there, and he didn't look too convinced as he headed back to the dugout. You know, those are tough ones to let go as a hitter, but with the human umpire calling balls and strikes, it's always going to be on you to protect yourself with two strikes. Here's Nick Madrigal. He's 0 for 1. First pitch doesn't find the zone. The Marlins leading by three. And we're at the top of the fifth. 
Swing and a miss. And one and one. Good late sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good. And then by the time he gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. One down, base is empty. Down the line. And it's off the wall, but foul. Kicks and fires. That's inside. Two balls, two strikes. This to third, and that one handled. Gets it to first, and the first two set down to the top of the fifth. Good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for. Ball on the ground, nice ground out. Here's Nico Horner. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the... Oh, now this one's blasted deep to left. Way back there, on its way, and out of here. That'll fire up the dugout, and they're chipping away. It's 4-2. Oh, that one got in the jet stream on a line drive. We saw the numbers on the backs of the jerseys of the outfielders, which is usually bad news. And all of a sudden, they're back in this ballgame. So two away with nobody on. And next for the Cubs, Seiya Suzuki. Just missed. The 1 0. And he dodges that fastball. Lazardo, maybe a little less aggressive on the mound right now after that home run, Chris. Yeah, it seems that way. You know, guys, they can come out, feel good, but then all of a sudden get touched up a little bit and they start trying to throw instead of. Chisholm makes the play, and that is that. But not before they answer back with a solo home run. It's now 4 2. Major League Baseball is on the show. Back here at Lone Depot Rita, Park. John Chabi with my buddy Chris Singleton. It's set to get us started. Bottom five, Luis Arias. Steele back to work. Ball one there. Base knock center field. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Everything came together for him. That's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load out of the way early. He stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. And now here is Tim Anderson. Nobody out, runner at first. That one is absolutely belted. And in one hops the wall. The rise, rounds third, headed for the plate. He'll score, and they lead by three. Comes through with the RBI. Fastball pretty much middle-middle, and that's what you fall asleep dreaming about as a hitter. So no surprise, he put a great swing on it. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Justin Steele won't go any further, and he's responsible for the runner on second, so the book isn't closed on him yet. We'll be right back. They go with one of their more experienced arms in this spot, Drew Smiley. Well, at this point of the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and you need a little length out of this arm. 
coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. Here's Josh Bell, one for two. Swing and a tapper. Throws to first, and that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. That's a good piece of hitting right there. It's early, but you still want to move the runner up and give your team a chance to score. That's exactly what happened, so you better believe your teammates are happy with you after that at bat. Berger in the box with one away as he takes ball one. Here comes a pitch. Strike on the outside corner. And the count one and one. New pitcher in the game for the Cubs, number 43. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. pitch and he gets tied up right there talk about tying a guy up that was ugly one away with a runner at third last half of inning number five and down on strikes he goes and there's two away just locked him up right there for the second out and that's an at bat he's probably going to be thinking about for a little while didn't pull the trigger not how you want to go down in an RBI spot so now you got to hope your teammate behind you can pick you up Chisholm in the box with two gone and it takes a look at a called strike And he chases that one. Inning over, and it could have been worse. Marlins get a run on the RBI double. It's 5-2. Back here in Miami, digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Ian Happ. The pitch. That one's in there. That's strike one. Double-barreled action in the bullpen. Anthony Bender, the young right-hander, up and throwing. Weathers warming up as well. And he deals. Bounced up the middle. Gathers and throws to first. Now one gone in the top of the sixth. I love how guys at this level are able to slow the game down, whether it's in the batter's box or on defense. And right there, that was a good job of knowing just how much time he had. We talk about that internal clock. He was able to gather himself, get a good grip, and make an accurate throw across the diamond. Here comes Cody Bellinger. Swing and a miss. 0-1. This guy who grew up in big league clubhouses, got to be a nice feeling, Siggy, when your father played in the big leagues and he passes down all that wisdom. Comes up empty. I can only imagine the comfort level of being in the ballpark. For those kids who are fortunate enough to have a dad that played in the big leagues, them being on the baseball field, for some it's pressure. For them, they feel that they are right at home. Not in time. He's safe. Well, from the time you're a little leaguer, you're taught to hustle out of the box and give it a full sprint through the base, regardless of how you hit it. And he didn't make great contact, but the effort was there, and he earns the base hit. Man at first with one gone. Dansby Swanson stands in. Lazardo checks over to first, and he's back.
That one finds the zone, and that is strike one. Now this team is definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap, but you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. The pitch. Swing and a miss. The Cubs trailing by three. And we're the top half of the sixth. Got him swinging. Picks up strikeout number seven. Dominating strikeout there on just three pitches, and that's what a good power pitcher can do to you. If he's hitting his spots, filling up the strike zone, sometimes he bats over before it really begins. Christopher Morell will hit next. And a strike in there. Bellinger, the runner at first with two gone. And it's even up. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. That one drilled left field. And out of here. And they throw a pair on the board. It's 5-4. That's exactly the pitch he was looking for. Crushes it and hits it out of the ballpark. Base is empty with two away. And up next for Chicago, Jan Gomes. And that clips the inside corner. The pitch. And a foul ball. And a pitch. Swing and a drive. Deep right field. That one's carrying. Out of here. Into the second deck it goes. And it ties it up. It's 5-5. That one just sounded different. And might have been the loudest moment yet. Man, my ears are ringing. I can feel that swing from the booth. Back-to-back -back jacks, and this club is fired up right now, Boog. I mean, this is the kind of thing where you really start to notice hitters in a lineup feeding off each other, and the collective confidence just continues to grow. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Jesus Lazardo gives way, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. New pitcher for the Marlins, Trevor Rogers. He's into the game with the bases empty. Two outs, nobody on. And now Patrick Wisdom. There's a strike. Two down, nobody on. Hard hit, left side. Out number three. But two round trippers in this inning. The long ball was working. All even at five apiece. Well, we go bottom six. Here's the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. A wind in the pitch. And a foul ball. 
You know, these Marlins, simply put, are producing a lot of quality swings. They've hit seven line drives already, and even though some of them have been for outs, there's nothing wrong with delivering consistent, hard contact. That's almost always going to lead to positive results. Up the middle, corner. Fires over to first. Leadoff man retired in the sixth. And now for the Marlins, Jesus Sanchez. And the first offering is not close. Breaking ball through there for a strike. Way out front for strike two. Well, he went inside a couple of times, and now outside. Hitter's not exactly sure where to look for this next pitch. Battling here as he fouls it away. One down, base is empty. This one lifted in the air, left field. Pat moving under it. Makes the grab, and there's two gone. The bat. And now here's the Marlins DH, Abasail Garcia. He's already homered here in this one. First offering, and it just misses. All tied up here in the bottom of the sixth. That one ripped right center field. And it's a one hopper off the wall. Should be extra bases. Garcia into second, and he's got a double. Love how he let that ball travel, trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. Man in scoring position with two away. Now the batter now, Nick Fortes. And that one missing low. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit's probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. Two outs. Right through there for a strike. That slider breaking in could be a tricky pitch. If you don't finish it and have that bite at the end and it stays out over the plate, it can get hit a long way. But that was a good one right there. Man on second, two down. Clips the outside corner, and that is strike two. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A.B. going. Two outs and one in scoring position. Strike three. Got him with the backdoor breaking ball. A lot of adrenaline. We can see it right there. And sometimes you just got to let it out. That's an outstanding job of taking that, executing, and getting out of a tough inning. And welcome back to the ballpark. Top of inning number seven. So up now for Chicago, Nick Madrigal. And a pitch. There's a strike, 95 of that one. Rogers, a former All-Star. He features a four-seam fastball, a changeup, a slider, and he works in a two-seamer. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. The pitch. Out towards right center field. Grabs it on the run. And there's one away. Back to the leadoff spot in the Cubs lineup. Nico Horner, the next Cub to hit. In there for a strike at the bottom of the zone. 
Well, an at bat can be a little bit of a dance. Strike one here, but a few more pitches. We'll see how it turns out. Next pitch is outside. Base is empty one away here in the top half of inning number seven. The one two. Got him. And two away now. Now at the plate, Seiya Suzuki. That's in there. Strike one. Not sure if he was expecting for the pitcher to come right at him, but he got a nice cookie there and just watched it the entire way. Ripped to third, but handled, and that'll end the inning. And the Cubs are down in order. Our score holds at five apiece. So they turn things over to the righty, Mark Leiter Jr. Mark Leiter Jr. Luis Arias digs in now. One for three. As he turns on the rubber and with that good live arm delivers that's ripped and this one could be extra bases around first and hustling for second half fires it in and the potential go ahead run stops at second base. You know, I was watching his rounds during batting practice today so impressed with his ability to let the ball travel go back up the middle and the other way sometimes when you step in the box during the game you get a little anxious and you get away from that but so far I've seen him stay consistent with his pregame preparation so digging in Tim Anderson right through there for a strike. Go ahead run and score in position. Nobody out. Swings and misses. Oh, a two down. Movement in the bullpen. Yancy Almonte up and throwing for manager Craig Council. On the ground right side down the line and it's foul. Righty delivers. That's off the mark and a count one and two. On the ground right side corner tosses the first. Yeah, they take care of Anderson for the out. Not a bad outcome in that spot. The runner moves up to third, and now they have a chance to drive in the go-ahead run. It's not a knock, but at the end of the day, it's a good at bat. And now the switch hitting first baseman Josh Bell. Out in front with the swing, and that is strike one. Here's a sack fly situation, and he's got to make sure he gets the ball out over the plate and get those arms extended. They're trying to crowd him with the infield in. This will be a big pickoff if he can push a run across. That misses. Ball one. With the go-ahead run at third, here the bottom of the seventh. And another ball. Right hander kicks deals. Mm. Just misses there. Jake Berger to bat next. Mm. 
gets a piece and stays alive. Arise stands at third with one gone in the inning. Ground ball to the right side. Steps on first for the out. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. Nice job of the pitcher to bear down, make the pitch, get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. So two down now, and here is Jake Berger. Got to be careful with this guy. He's got power. He can untie it with one swing. And a swing and a miss there. This guy's sink has so much drop in it. It's almost like a split finger fastball. Instead of just weak contact and balls on the ground, he gets swings and misses. Now one and one. That one hammer, the pulled foul. Two outs. Up the middle. The throw to first. That's the inning. Marlins leave one. And this remains a 5 5 ball game. And we're back. We're at the top of the eighth. So up now for Chicago, Ian Happ. Rogers back to work. There's a strike. And that one fouled off. High fly ball lifted in the air right field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. Here's Cody Bellinger, known for his late-inning heroics. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate, and try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Little chopper rolls foul. Ball tied up, and we're in the top of the eighth. Next pitch is outside. He swings and crushes one. Deep on its way. Way back there. Gone. It's a belly bomb. That was blasted to the moon. It's 6-5. That's their fourth home run of the game. They can't stop, and they won't stop hitting home runs in this one, Boog. They're clearly feeding off of each other at the dish. They thought he could blow a high fastball by him, but he was ready for it. Look at how quickly he jumped on that pitch. Dansby Swanson, the next Cub to hit. Fastball for a strike. Fell on the mound. This is a spot where he's got to treat this as a clean inning. Forget about the home run. Forget about now being behind on the scoreboard. Start fresh and get those hitters back up to the plate as quickly as possible. Not close with that one. And a count one and two. The shortstop takes a ball. Definitely a swing and miss slider down and in. He finished that really well. Just couldn't get him to offer at it. Swing and a miss struck him out. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone.
And that one clips the corner. Next offering is in for a strike. Two down, nobody on. And that's a base hit. Now it's Jan Gomes. And there's the strike. Morell off of first with two away. Top of the zone, and it's called a strike. Perhaps not quite ready to hit. First two pitches by him for a couple of strikes. Now back is against the wall. He's going to have to figure something out and figure it out quickly. Way upstairs, and the count is one and two. Rarely will you see a pitcher just to waste a pitch like that. The batter wasn't even tempted to swing. Every pitch needs to have a purpose so that it can set up a following pitch to help you get that out. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. Throw in holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two away. Couldn't get any air under it, but he smoked that ball back up the middle. Timing was just perfect. Got great wood on it, and there was just no chance for the infielders with how hard he hit it. First and second, two down. And now it's going to be Patrick Wisdom. Ball one, no strikes. That clips the corner. Getting a little frustrated with the strike zone. Chop to first. And he picks it up in foul territory. Knocks that one away and we'll do it again. off the plate that time cuts and misses it's a strikeout Cubs get one on the solo shot it's tightened up a bit at 6-5 now you're watching Major League Baseball on the show Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Hector Neris. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. And at the plate for Miami, Jazz Chisholm Jr. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a flyout. And a pitch. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Foul back our way and that's out of play. Looking to get the tying run on base. Fouls it back with two strikes. Here's the 0-2. That ball is foul, and the pressure is building. Just missed. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. Line to right, base hit. And the tying run is on with a leadoff single. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, 
the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. No outs, runner at first. Now the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. That pitch in for a strike. It's 0-1. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Righty to the plate. Swung on, belted. That's back. And that one hops the wall. Jazz on his horse coming around third. He'll score in the title. 6-6. Six, six. Such great concentration. Everybody on their feet, knowing that you can come through with a good swing. And there he doesn't try to do too much. Now a move being made at second base. On to pinch run, John Birdie. Tied at six. Now it's the right fielder, Jesus Sanchez. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Around third. He will score and they take the lead. 7 6. His confidence level is so high. Really nice job of coming through in a big spot. Nice swing to drive that pitch up the middle. Could have easily bit out in front on the off speed and pulled off of it. But the new pitcher in the game, Yency Almonte. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. So now here's the D.H. Avasail Garcia. And that one a little bit high. Back and forth we go. A seesaw battle in the late stages of this one. That's down and in. A slider missed. Movement in the Cubs bullpen. Jose Quas preparing to come on if needed. Next pitch is outside. So definitely a little wild right out of the gate. Well, it can be a little tough coming from the bullpen mound to this mound, but you've got to find a way to get ahead in the count quickly. He hasn't. We'll see how this at bat turns out. Let's see if he gives him anything to hit here. And there's the automatic. Fouls one away and now three and two. Payoff pitch. Got it by him for the K. Now the catcher up to hit, Nick Fortes. And that drops in for a strike. Good approach right there. You want to get something just a little higher that you can elevate, stand on that double play. Checks over to first, back safely. Two runs across in the inning. Here the bottom half of the eighth inning. And the righty deals. Foul ball still 0-2. Wouldn't chase that time. Right-handed reliever, and another ball. The guy at the plate could recognize slider out of the hand. Didn't stay in the tunnel very long in terms of depth and perception. He knew right away it was an off-speed pitch. Swing and a pop-up. Foul territory for the catcher. He's got it. There's two away. Now back, second baseman, Louis. Oh. 
Luis Arias, the next up for the Marlins. That misses the zone, and that is ball one. Right through there for a strike. Out to short, Swanson. Tosses to first. That ends the frame. They get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Marlins seven and the Cubs six. Now into the game, John Birdie. He'll be out in left field. Number five, John Birdie. So the closer summoned from the bullpen, Tanner Scott. I think closer has to be one of the toughest jobs in baseball, and you see a pretty high turnover rate because of it. Every outing seems to be high pressure, this one included. We'll see if he can wrap up the win and get himself a save. On the ground, right side. Arise on to first, and they get the leadoff man in the ninth. That play won't be trending on social media later on, but it's still important to execute it to perfection. This game is a lot harder than it looks, partner. So the lineup flips over. Nico Horner, the next Cub to hit. That one finds the zone. That's strike one. Trying to close out a one-run lead here at the top of the ninth. That misses off the outside edge. Nasty backdoor slider. There's really nothing you can do with that if you swing at it. So that's a good take by him. And yeah, that's downstairs and outside. Last couple of pitches breaking balls away. I think he's going to have to come firm inside to be able to open up that location if he wants to go back there later in this count. And a pitch. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Swing and a miss struck him out. That's out number two. And next for the Cubs, Seiya Suzuki. That one fouled off. Two outs. They're down to their final strike. One strike away. And look out as that one ran in and got him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Two outs, runner at first. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Ian Happ. Right through there for a strike. Typically, the outfield defense will play a little bit deeper just to keep the ball in front, make sure that runner on first doesn't come all the way around to score and tie this ball game up. The 0 1. That one missing inside. Suzuki off of first with two away. Wouldn't chase that time. Kicks and fires. And now two and two. Well, so many hard throwing relievers in the game these days, you would think that hitters have made the adjustment, but I don't know if you ever get used to it. Just pumping gas out of the bullpen. So hard to play catch up. And now the lefty sends it to center, and this should be it. And he's got it. Ball game. And the Marlins hold on to win a tight one as this one ends as a one run ball game.
All these players were able to take the lead in the bottom of the eighth and just cruise to this win, getting those final three outs in the top of the ninth. Excellent job of securing your home field and keeping the fans in the ball game all the way to the end. Nice W all the way around.